So here's the last big topic on atomic structure. It's called electron configurations. I love these as well. And they will pop up kind of throughout the year. It's another shorthand way of mapping the electrons in an atom. Now I love the orbital diagrams. An orbital diagram is like the last video where you have the boxes and the arrows. So if I were doing an orbital diagram for something like boron, I would see little boxes, that would be like the 1s and the 2s and then next would come the p orbitals there are three of them Oopsie, 2p and so on now you always have those boxes drawn for you so you'll never have to come up with the order of the orbitals or draw the boxes. All you have to do is draw the arrows in. And again, I use something small like boron. This isn't a big deal. Uh, boron is element number five. So there are five positive protons and five electrons. I can fill in five electrons. I start with the lowest energy orbital. The so 1s, you get 2. Then I go to the 2s, you get 2. And then technically, this fifth electron could go in any of those p orbitals. It doesn't matter which one you put it in. And it doesn't matter if the arrow points up or down. I usually just put it in the first one, but it does not matter whatsoever. There, done. There's your orbital diagram. Again, not a big deal until the atoms start to get kind of big. You know, you could get something like, I don't know, uh, mercury. Mercury is element number 80. You're going to have 40 boxes for mercury, which it's just going to look kind of crazy going all the way across your page. you got a lot going on there. I do like the orbital diagram. Don't get me wrong. They show a good visual representation of the distribution of the electrons in the atom. An even shorter shortcut is the electron configuration. Here's how you switch an orbital diagram to an electron configuration. You take the no name of the orbital, so we would call this the 1s orbital. It's filled with two electrons, so you just put a little superscript 2 up there. We read that as 1s2. The 1s orbital has two electrons. Oh. The next orbital is the 2s. It's filled with two electrons. So you give it a little superscript 2. And then finally the 2p has 1. So you get a little superscript 1. There, you're done. It shows a lot of the same information. It shows the distribution of the electrons, what orbitals are filled, what energy levels are used. It just doesn't show like the boxes and the arrows and it doesn't show that they're spinning in opposite directions, but we know that. So I still like it. I like this little electron configuration. It's just a little shorter. It's very simple to go from an orbital diagram to an electron configuration. So the shortcut electron configuration, 1s2, little superscript 2, 2s1. Done. That's it. Oh, that's not so bad. Almost kind of fun. Uh, carbon. You could shorten this up and say 1s, the 1s orbital has two electrons, little superscript 2. Next comes the 2s, it has two electrons. And then next is the 2p, it has two. So these little superscripts, the little 2, 2, and 2, there he is, that should add up to the total number of electrons. There are six. Here's the only kind of bummer about the orbital diagram. When you hit the p orbitals or d orbitals, it doesn't really show how they're distributed. It doesn't show you that those two p orbitals are in separate 
orbitals, or the 2p electrons, are in separate orbitals. You just kind of have to know that, that if you had two electrons in the p orbitals, they would each be in separate, because there are a total of three available p orbitals. Sometimes I like to see that. I like to see that there are single electrons versus there paired Aldana, electrons. Dial 6501. All right, let's try oxygen. Aldana, call 6501. 1s2. 2s2. Now this time the 2p has 1, 2, 3, 4 total. So it adds up to 8. If I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yep, oxygen has eight total electrons. But again, when I see the 2p4, it doesn't show me that there are two pairs and two singles. We just kind of have to know that, that there are three p orbitals. If you have four total p electrons, two of them are going to have to get paired, and the other two are single. And finally, chlorine would shorten up a little bit. And we could say 1s2, 2s2. This time the 2p is full with 6. The 3s is full with 2. And then the 3p has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And again, those superscripts should all add up to 17, the total number of electrons in that atom. So they are very much related to each other. The electron configuration is just an even shorter shortcut, I guess. It's very easy to go from orbital diagram to electron configuration. But what if you don't have the orbital diagram? What if you don't have all those boxes? And the nice thing about the boxes is that it shows you the order that the orbitals fill. First I go to the 1s, then the 2s, then the 2p, and so on. What if you don't have that? Then do you have to like memorize the order that the orbitals fill? I don't like memorizing things. If I don't have to, I don't want to memorize it. I want to just be able to figure it out. And you can. If you have a favorite periodic table, or even like maybe the periodic table in your planner, now would be a good time to get it out. So maybe hit pause, go to your planner, Flip to the periodic table because you're going to want to label it. Or if you have any other periodic table that you can write on, pause the video at this point, get your periodic table ready, and then come back and we're going to label this thing so that you don't have to memorize the order that the orbitals fill. This is going to be awesome. Okay, so we're all good with periodic tables. Here's an example periodic table, and you can mark yours just the same as we're going to mark this one. You will always have a periodic table when you're taking a test or a quiz where you'll need it, and you'd always be able to write on it. So if you don't want to memorize the order of the orbitals, mark it up like this. The periodic table is more amazing than we'll ever understand. And sometimes people will say, like, why does it have this kind of crazy shape? Why are there like some columns with more elements and some with less? Oh, it's crazy, but it's crazy in a good way. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to box the first two columns like this. And you can do that on your periodic table as well. I'm going to put a box around the first two columns. Awesome. So technically, up in the corner, this guy is like hydrogen. And then so on. This is like sodium and so forth. This guy, oopsie, lithium. Hello. Sorry, lithium. Lithium. There you are. And then this is sodium. And so on. It's like potassium, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this guy here is kind of like beryllium, and this is kind of like magnesium, this is kind of like calcium, and so on. Awesome.
Okay, we're going to label this as the S block. So you can write an S right in there. It's the S block. There is one S orbital for every energy level, 1 through 7. If your periodic table doesn't have the rows numbered, go ahead and number this. Starting with hydrogen, number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Number the rows all the way down, 1 through 7. This is brilliant. There is an S orbital in all seven energy levels. How many electrons fit in an S orbital? Hopefully you're saying two, right? Well, what do you know? The S block goes across two columns to represent the fact that two electrons can fit in the S orbitals. It's just magic. Now, there is kind of a little ghost element in here. Notice that I left this spot blank, and we're going to have to deal with this guy. So technically, helium is over here. The next chapter, we'll look at the groups of the periodic table a little bit more, but you might kind of remember that this area, this last column, these are the noble gases. Like this last group down here. Technically, helium is a noble gas. He's a non-reactive gas. So on the periodic table, helium is put on top of the noble gas family. However, for electron purposes, we're going to draw a little ghost helium. Here he is. There you are, little ghost helium. For electron purposes, helium looks a lot more like beryllium, magnesium, and calcium. He really belongs in the S block. If we're looking at properties, then yeah, he belongs in the noble gas family. But for electron purposes, you can put a little ghost helium in the S block. Awesome. We continue. All right, now we're going to go over this way. And we're going to put a box around these six columns. Awesome. And then in here we're going to write P. This is the P block of the periodic table. These are elements that fill P orbitals. Notice that the P block goes across one, two, three, four, five, six six elements or six columns to represent the fact that six electrons fit in the p orbitals. Brilliant. Gosh, this is good. Okay, so now here's the next thing. If we pretend that helium is not over here, technically helium is not in the p block. Now check this out. The first row going across the periodic table represents the first energy level. The first energy level should have an s orbital. It does. And that s orbital can have two electrons. Those first two electrons belong to helium and hydrogen. Oh. And now watch what happens if you follow this across to the p block. There's nothing. Because again, helium's gone. Helium really belongs in the S block if we're talking electrons. If you follow that first row across, you go hydrogen, helium, and then that's it. There are no 1P elements. Because there's no such thing as a 1P orbital. So here's what I like to do. The second energy level, or the second row going across the periodic table, starts with an S. The S can hold two electrons. And now if you follow that across, the second energy level is where the P's start. And then I always label it. I label it starting with two. So I go two, three, four, five, six, seven. P 
orbitals are found in every energy level 2 through 7, but not 1. Sweet. And then finally, in the middle of the periodic table, we're going to mark this as the D block. Awesome. Okay, so there are a total of 10 D electrons. There are 5 D orbitals, each can hold 2. Is this magic or what? Count how many rows the D block goes across, or how many columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, you've got to be kidding, 10. The D block goes across 10 elements to represent the 10 electrons that can fit in a D orbital. And now notice this. Uh, we do not have Ds in the 1 or the 2. Ds don't start till the third energy level. And so I like to write that in. This is going to be 3, 4, 5, 6. Notice we fixed our little discrepancy. When you fill orbitals, you just walk your finger across the periodic table and it tells you the order that the orbitals fill. And it tells you how many electrons should go in that orbital. So for example, the first orbital filled is the 1s, we're in the s block, it gets two electrons, 1s2. Oh, so we'd go 1s2. Then that's it. If I follow across, there's nothing in the p block. The next available orbital, element number three. We're in the second energy level. S block goes across 2, 2s2. Two two. Then we keep running our fingers through the periodic table. The next available orbital is the second energy level. We're in the p block. It goes across 6, 2p6. Then you just keep going. After 2p6, next, you're in the third energy level. You go 3. We're in the S block. It goes across 1, 2, 3S2. Then you keep going. Next, I move over to the 3P. It goes across 6. You just keep running through all the elements. Now watch this. Remember how we said that in those orbital diagrams, technically the 4S should really fill before the 3D because it has lower energy. We fixed it. The periodic table will tell you. If I go across 3P, I'm at argon 18. Element 19 is potassium, 4S12. And now if you always mark this in, now you hit the D block, but the Ds don't start till the third level. So it goes 3D, we go across 10. And now if you wanted to keep going, you'd fill the 3D with 10, and then the next orbital, we're back to the fourth energy level, we're in the P block, it would go across 6. And then you just keep going. If you label your periodic table like this, you just let your fingers walk you through the electron configuration. After 4P6, that gets me to krypton. After krypton, number 36, comes number 37, rubidium. That's fifth energy level. S block goes across two. And then again, if you have this written in, you'll never forget the next available orbital is the 4D. It goes across 10. And then I pick it up back in the fifth energy level with the 5P for six, and so on. The first thing I would do when I get a periodic table for a test or quiz is mark it up like this. It's not hard. And it's like the most foolproof way of getting the order that the orbitals will fill for these electron configurations.